Welcome all of you. I am Dr. Garana Shivasta from Orange Clinic and Shemist Delhi. So we are starting with our series Hystroscopy Made Easy and the first part the office hystroscopy. The topic today is vaginoscopic approach in hystroscopy 25 years later. So earlier when we used to do hystroscopy in around 1980s there was always a volcellum and a speculum and we used to hold the cervix and then the hystroscope used to go inside. But nowadays the technique is not to use it and the method is called as the vaginoscopic approach developed by Professor Bitoji in 1990. The whole idea was to shift the hystroscopy from operative room to an office room. So what changes have made it possible? The first change is the use of saline as distension media. Second is the availability of high resolution rigid and flexible mini endoscopes. For example, this is an office Bitochi hystroscope. This is the inflow sheet. This is the outflow sheet. This is for the light cable. The scope is connected here. This is the operative channel. This is a 2.9 mm scope with a total diameter of around 5 mm. Now if you see the end of the scope has been specifically designed for office hystroscopy. The end is like this. It is vertically oval so that and the isthmus is transversely oval so that when we are at the level of internal os this scope can be moved to 90 degrees and it can easily alienate itself with the level of isthmus and go aside easily the second reason is why we are doing vaginoscopic approaches because we do not want any problem or any pain to the patient. One of the limiting factors of doing an office hystroscopy is the pain. These smaller size miniature endoscopes and now with the advent of 2 mm scopes, the total diameter becomes only 4 mm. It has become even more easier. So earlier people used to hold the vulva so that the vagina becomes a cavity the water distends it and we can see the external os easily. But now the technique is we do not touch the patient at all. The patient is comfortable. We are doing an, an office setup. They, we do not want to touch the patient. We do not want her to cause any pain. Some people encounter problem in finding their external os. So there is a small trick for that. Most of the uterus are antiverted uterus. That means if they are antiverted, their cervix is lying onto the posterior side. So when we know that your uterus is antiverted uterus, the cervix and the external loss are going to lie posteriorly. So when you enter, you just slightly raise your hand so that your scope is directed towards the posterior end and you can easily see the external os. Now look at how my hand moves. Once we have seen our external os, we negotiate it and then my hand moves down to go through the cervical canal and then it is moving down. The more antiverted the uterus is, the more my hand will go down. Similarly, if the uterus is more of retroverted uterus, the external os is going to lie in the same plane and as we go inside we can see the os lying almost in the center. So this trick helps you to visualize your external os much more easily without wasting any of your time. As we have discussed the vaginoscopic approach was developed in 1995. You do not need the need of speculum or a tenaculum. It can be distended by introducing the liquid distension media at a very low pressure. Now this point is important because we do not want to raise the pressure above the mean arterial pressure as directed by the AAGL guidelines. They say 
the pressure should be as low as possible to distend the uterine cavity. For instance, if you increase your pressure, with this pressure, the fluid will rush in through the fallopian tubes and come out into the peritoneum, which may cause pain, which may cause vasovagal reaction. The only thing that we have to take care in an office hysteroscopy is the pain. So we want to keep our pressures low so that it is not uncomfortable for the patient and the patient goes for it easily. Before deciding, one thing that you also always, always have to talk to your patient is the counseling. The counseling in office hysteroscopy is very important. You should counsel your patient that the pain encountered during an office hysteroscopy will be equivalent to the first day of your menstrual period. If the patient is willing to accept that, then you can proceed for your office hysteroscopy. If the patient does not even want that much of a pain, however simple the case is, she may cause certain problems. So you may change from office to operator. Next thing that you have to keep in mind is, I'll show you a video of the office hysteroscopy. Now we are into the vagina and this is the cervix. We can make out the transition from the squamous to columnar epithelium. We have entered inside the cervix and this is the cervical canal, the arbor vitae and the plica palmitae. And as we are moving in, we can appreciate the beautiful columnar epithelium. Then we are inside the cavity and this is the panoramic view. This is the left ostea of the patient, which we could see by simply rotating our light cable. And then we move on to see the right ostea of the patient. Also keep in mind that there are a few hemorrhagic spots which may suggest some sort of inflammation in the endometrial cavity. Also if you see we have done a, ham a slight test and we can see the slight test has been avascular suggesting it is a secretory kind of endometrium. Now once you have visualized your endometrial cavity, all four walls, both the ostea, you withdraw again, look at the cervical canal and then come out. So what I want to say is that the hysteroscopy is again another video. It is showing a beautiful video as you move inside the cervical canal. It is must be a multi paris patient because we did not encounter any difficulty during the negotiation of isthmus and we can see a polyp and because of which everything is inflamed the endometrial cavity is very irregular. So what we have seen is that various studies have shown that vaginoscopic approach is effective and faster than the conventional approach and it also reduces the patient discomfort. The studies have been done assessing whether outpatient hysteroscopy using the no touch technique confers any advantage and they have found that there was no significant difference in the requirement of local anesthesia but those who underwent no touch hysteroscopy had the lowest requirement of LA. The time taken was shorter, there was no difference in the pain scores, therefore the author had found that it is significantly faster to perform than the traditional technique. Although there was no difference in the pain scores between the two techniques, LA requirement was less who underwent no touch hysteroscopy. Another video showing this, we can see the beautiful external os and how the squamous epithelium is changing into columnar epithelium. So once we are inside, the fluid will distend the cervical canal itself and make the passage. The slower you go, the better you see. And you know that this is where the black hole, as we say it, is there. And there is where you have to move. Now, since this is a 30 degree scope, where we have to move is to be kept at the 6 o'clock position. And this is how we make an easy entry. And we see the panoramic view of the endometrial cavity. The endometrial cavity seems to be okay in the secretory phase. This is the left ostea. The left ostea seems to be open, completely normal. 
then we again visualize the endometrium and then we go and see the right ostea. Right ostea also seems to be normal. So what all do we see? We see the external os, we see the vagina, first of all the vagina, then the external os, the cervical canal, then the four walls, the endometrium, the ostea. All these things have to be visualized when we are doing the office hysteroscopy. Again another video which shows that there was a lot of blood and mucus inside and for this we opened our suction so that it clear and we could see a grade zero myoma inside the cavity. So this patient definitely required further treatment. And nowadays the hysteroscope has become like a stethoscope for a gynecologist. We see and we treat, that is what we say. So what are the factors which help us to do hysteroscopy in the office procedure? First of all, as we talked about the miniature scopes, Second is by reducing your pressure, which should be electronically monitored by endomats, by Hamao endomats or by Histromat Easy. And third is the counseling of the patient. So what are the various factors which cause pain in the patient? We have already discussed this, that this is the internal os lying like this and had the scope been more circular, it would have distended the cervical fibers causing more pain. But our scope is aligned like that of the internal os giving less pain. So now we have seen the difference between diagnostic and operative that line is blurry. We can do see and do the procedures at the same sitting without causing much pain. So what are the factors that cause pain during hysteroscopy? The first is the introduction of hysteroscope through a cervical canal, especially when it is pushed through the internal ostium. We know how to handle that. Remember, we simply have to rotate our scope 90 degree to align itself and then we are easy to go. Remember, we do not use mesoprostol because first of all, it causes distension which allows an improper irrigation of the fluid and secondly it causes the pain and the whole idea of office hysteroscopy is lost if there is pain. The second cause of the pain is contractile activity of the myometrium caused by distension of the cavity by means of distension media. So that means the pressure has to be kept low which we have also discussed. Then the direct stimulation of uterine was coming into the contact with the instrument. So for this you have to go slow and you'll have to see where exactly you are going. Then describing another important concept. Now since our scope is a 30 degree scope, if we keep the place, the black hole as we call it, wherever we have to negotiate a path at the 6 o'clock position, we are moving in the right direction. If we keep it in the center of our view, we are causing some certain amount of pain. This is because of the 30 degree scope. Again to demonstrate this, if this is what we see, then we have to keep this like this at six o'clock position for proper guidance and movement. So all said and done, the vaginoscopic procedure is a standalone procedure for so many other purposes. First of all, the pediatrics application of vaginoscopy for it keeps the hymen intact. Second, for various vaginal sex, benign malignant malformation, vaginal endometriomas, for fistulas and also for anatomical abnormalities. So all these things have to be kept in mind when you are going for an office hysteroscopy procedure. Thank you so much for your patient listening. We'll come back to you with another series. Thank you.